Hello there and welcome. This is Mikhail or Michael speaking. As always, thank you all who decided to support me financially, be it through PayPal, Patreon or Super Thanks. Your help is immense and helps me put food on my table. Thank you friends and have a blessed day. Today's video I will start with the situation on the Zaporozhye front. First, let's touch on the situation near Arikhiv. Throughout last 24 hours, Ukrainians have become extremely active on this front and with heavy artillery support have started their offensive operations. At first they've started their offensive operation here, in the direction of Lapkove. Also they are advancing from the general direction of Arikhiv, which they use as their main supply hub, and advanced in the general direction of Takmak. At this point in time Russians have repelled all of those attacks and did not lose any ground. Interestingly enough that there are reports of a Leopard 2 tanks being used in this battle, some reports also suggest that at least one of those tanks were destroyed. Now I don't know whether that's true or not, so I guess we have to wait for more confirmation. Overall situation here is still developing as those attacks are very recent, so we should wait and see for more reports. From here let's move to Vremivka bridgehead, which is located here. Ukrainians here did not stop attacking and continuously attacked all across the front line, here towards the settlement of Livande, here across this front line in the direction of Rivnopil, also in attempt to recapture settlement of Niskuchne, and overall those attacks were also repelled by the Russian soldiers. Then we have interesting situation here in Novodonetsk. If you remember at some point Ukrainians took control of this city but were immediately thrown out. The way they did it is they crossed the small river here and advanced here. This gave them ability to capture this bridgehead. As a result of Russian counter-attack operations, it is being reported that this bridgehead was entirely recaptured by the Russians. So Russians recaptured about this much territory from the Ukrainian forces. Further Ukrainian attempts to regain control over the situation and recapture Novodonetsk resulted in a failure, which again manifested itself with Ukrainians retreating from this sector. Also it is important to note that with the action here near Novodonetsk, Ukrainians also committed some counter-offensive operations here in the direction of Novomayorsky and Shevchenko. Also they have attempted to attack here to the flank and rear of Pavlivka in the general direction of Yegorovka. Those attacks were also repelled by the Russian forces and situation here is stable as of right now. If we zoom out, we again can see Ukrainians attempting to flank Russian positions here where their most vulnerable yet most defended positions are located. It would seem that they don't feel so sure about attacking straight on and are attempting to flank this sector. From here let's move to the Avdiivka front. Here situation is most interesting as well. Here Ukrainians also intensified their attacks, especially towards the settlement of Vadiane. It is being reported that they have achieved some limited success here. What's interesting is, as you can see, Russians have already advanced here in this small part of the town. And with successful Ukrainian attack, this Russian positions and gains could be compromised. So if their development here in this sector continues, I'm sure Russians will be forced to retreat back and do everything in their power to remain control of this settlement. Vadiane is not the only settlement here that has been subject of Ukrainian offensive operations. Ukrainians are also advancing in the direction of this settlement. However, they did not see success here like they see here in Vadiane. Russians are repelling Ukrainian attacks here in Apitne. It is also important to note that this is not an easy battle for Ukrainian side. As they advance, they take casualties and even hiding in the forced lines does not save them all that much. I have a video for you of Russian Sonsepyok or TOS artillery system destroying Ukrainian positions within those said force lines. Then from here let's visit Bakhmut. At first let's cover the southern flank. 
here situation was developing as well as Ukrainians continued attacking here in the general direction of the settlement of Krudyumovka as well as retrying their attempts to cross the canal, thus compromising overall Russian positions here in this sector. On the interesting note, Russians had attempted a counter-attack operation here from Klishevka, however unsuccessful. With that, we move to the northern flank, where situation was developing in between Bogdanivka and Birhivka. Ukrainian push in this sector continues as Ukrainians are continuously attacking here along this field patches right next to this reservoir. Ukrainian sources suggest that the Ukrainian troops had already breached defensive lines here and were able to enter Berhivka. However, I have a video for you where Ukrainian offensive is taking place somewhere in this sector. Again, we can see that mostly the fighting happens here along the railroad and the last fragment where you see a tank, this is probably happening here as buildings look exactly the same, although destroyed. So we could at least know that Ukrainians are holding about this much territory. And it would seem that this is the gray zone as Russian positions are here. From here, we go to Siribiryansky forest. It has been reported that Ukrainians have attempted to attack towards Dibrova, but that attack was unsuccessful. Again, as Ukrainians attack, Russians spot them immediately and shell them immensely, making Ukrainians lose troops before they even reach the battlefield. Then also Ukrainians have tried to attack in the Kupiansk front. This time they tried to attack towards the settlement of Masyutivka. It is unclear where exactly they tried to attack. I assume they tried to cross the Oscar River and attack over it. Because if they attacked from here, they would need to bypass Liman Pierschi. And I don't think that they were able to advance that deep into Russian defensive lines. Overall, this attack was also repelled and nothing serious came out of this attack. So once again, in conclusion, Ukrainians have started attacking all across the front line, almost everywhere they can. Those battles are of local importance. They were only able to achieve relative success in two places near Birhivka and near settlement of Vadyane. Everywhere else, Russians were able to successfully repel those Ukrainian attacks. Now, please note that this is the situation as I record this video. So, of course, as situation here is very dynamic, situation could be changed at any moment. Anyway, this is the end of the video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please consider supporting it with a like, comment and a subscription. Also, please consider supporting me on Patreon, as it would move me forward to my goal of working on YouTube full-time. Thank you in advance. As always, humanity calls me to condemn our violence against human beings. Have a good day and always remember, Russia will be free and great.